to welcome everybody. Welcome to Hot Song Podcast. Today is August the 22nd, 2024, and the topic for this evening is Global Ascension. So um, let me actually pull up my, uh, my notes for this evening. So why Global Ascension? Why, why, why this topic? Why now? Because um, when was it? I think it was um, maybe last um, Sunday, Saturday or Sunday around around there. Um, my guys come to me and kind of told me to to start preparing for uh, global ascension. So I was like, at first I thought, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> I don't quite understand what what that means yet. So so yeah. Ascension, sure, but what what can I do for global ascension? You know, it's it's not like I can start the uh, global ascension myself. But so, and then after a couple of days, the my guys can come back and say, "Well, we want you to anchor in the the energy of um of cosmic love to facilitate this global ascension." So okay, that I can act on. <laughs> you know, just tell me global ascension. I don't know how to take it. So that's. So, so then um, once I heard that, that now they kind of you know, give me more specific things that I can actually do instead of just giving me some very nebulous um, uh, comment, then I can, I can actually do something. So I um, started researching. So what does global ascension mean? Because I know personal ascension, but what, what does it actually mean? And how, what does it look like? Um, because a lot of the times, um, what I what I've been told um, a couple of years ago is actually a little different from what I'm been being told now. So some discrepancies that I want to um, get more focused on it to to find out more. Anyways, so I've been researching global ascension what other people are saying and, and if anybody actually has anything concrete to say about what global ascension actually uh, feels like. Then, so that's what I've been doing some research and I thought, well, since I'm doing research, I might as well you know, just make it the topic for this evening so I can focus my attention and really prepare something and also uh, share what it is that I have gotten so far. So that's why we're doing Global Ascension today. So first first thing first, don't ask me when it is because I have no idea. I don't know when it is. It could be tomorrow. It could be 10 years or 100 years from now. So I have no idea. I just know that they told me to do, to do my part and I am glad we do that. So anyways, and a second thing is I actually want to touch on the global ascension because as far as i know that there are two ascensions there is the globe there's the personal one and then there is the global one the personal ascension um is really individual to everyone so i can ascend if i want to i can ascend today or even tomorrow so i have um i can i can get myself ready for that i can choose that that's that's personal ascension. Um, however, global ascension is not something that, you know, a person or even a group of, of people can dictate. It's something that is really co-creation between Earth, so this playground itself, so between Gaia and also between source. So the creator source and Gaia kind of co-create the, the, the just the right moment for global ascension to happen. So, so what after I've you know said all these things, what does personal ascension mean and what does global ascension mean? Really, what what does it look like? Um, when I say personal ascension, I mean um, ascension for me is really 
getting back to who we truly are. Because when we are in this body, when we are playing here on earth right now, we are not who we truly are. Because um, I'm quite sure the real me is, does not have the name Winnie. It does not have a, uh, a last name, does not have um, like all of those relations and limitations that have I have right now because my I absolutely know that my true essence is limitless, timeless. No, it cannot be anything that can be contained in a body. Um, not this body, not any body. So, so that's so ascension. Um, simply means that while I'm still in this body, I actually start to retain start to remember who i truly am um not a hundred percent because a hundred percent of who i am is just way too vast and big and um beyond the comprehension of my current um brain can process my current consciousness can process however it may be experienced as something like um, peace. Because when you know who you are, when you know that you are eternal essence, it's like nothing can ruffle you up anymore. You, you, don't, you don't feel fear. Just you know that everything is, you created it. And because you created it, you can also discreate it if you choose to do that. So when, when someone actually remember who they truly are, maybe not um, all, maybe not, not all the capabilities of uh, your true self, but at least have a, um, an understanding and knowing of who they truly are, it, it, it can be experienced as a peace, a, a bliss something that is just um that that takes you out so that you don't feel the the so nothing that is um no matter what it is that's happening outside of you it won't face you anymore so that is what ascension most likely would look like for somebody um, that is um still in the body so for me, that's what ascension is. That's for personal ascension is. It's just getting to the point where you know nothing that's happening outside is going to bother you or worry you. All of those things it does not mean that your life is going to be perfect and everything is going to, you know, just um, not that you're going to live a um, hundred percent charmed life. However. Even if you have challenges, you are not um, worried about the challenges. You just know that, okay, this, this is what it is right now. And you know that it just takes the next step and the next step. And eventually, whatever it is that you are faced with, it's going to be transformed because you, you know who you are and you know that you're bigger than any of the problems that you can possibly conjure up for yourself to experience. So that's what it is when you actually remember who you are. It's the, the, the peace, the love, the joy that you naturally feel. That's when you know that, okay, this is personal ascension. Does not mean that you're always you know, in bliss, 24 seven. However, even when you are knocked out of your um, comfort zone, you can get back to that comfort zone, that, that knowingness, that peace of mind quite easily. So that's what ascension, personal ascension, my understanding of what that looks like, what that feels like. So what does global ascension entail? What does that mean? Um, Earth itself is already in, has already ascended, meaning that Earth or the, the this playground is 
called Earth already made the choice that it is going to move into um, fifth dimension at least. However, because Earth is multifaceted, so even though it has made the choice to move into fifth dimension to host, meaning to host um, a playground, a playground that is fifth dimension compatible. However, Earth can still host 3D, 4D, and all the, the, the higher dimensions as well, all the way. So Earth is, um, is not just a one dimension um, you know, place. It's a multi-dimensional place and that's how it allows different um, games to be played on this on this playground. And global ascension actually just means that at some point though, Earth has actually um, decided that it will not host 3D anymore. It will not host 4D anymore. It's just going to be 5D and up. So right now, if you like, if, if we all, let's say all of us here have personally ascended, however, not everyone on Earth right now that's playing right now has made the choice to ascend. So we have um, people that is playing the 3D game, 4D game, and, and 5D and all those different dimension games all can intermingle right now. That's why we're seeing the, all the chaos in the, in the world right now. It's because Earth is still allowing all these kind of you know, 3D games, these dark games to be played. However, once global ascension actually happened, then these lower games is no longer possible, no longer supported. Um, you can't even you can't even create it. It's no longer supported. So that's what the global ascension really is, is cut off so that it is 5D and above. And, and what does that mean? It means that um, there's a lot of cleanup that needed to be done because there's a lot of um, battles. There's a lot of place within earth that has all these memories of um, the 3D games that has been Play. A lot of atrocities has been committed on Earth, and a lot of blood being spilled on Earth, and all these blood is really um, has imbued a lot of Earth with very convoluted energy. And at the global ascension, that's when all these energies will be cleared out, and only the beings that wanted to and has agreed to play in the fifth dimension game will be allowed. So not just human beings, but animals as well. So animals, there are animals that are um, kind of more parasitic. So those kinds of energy will no longer be sustained, sustainable on earth. So there are some animals because their nature is, um, is really to, um, you know, to take advantage of others. Like one, one, man, one, one that I can think of is mosquitoes. They suck blood. So that is a very um, parasitic way of sustaining their own body. So that hopefully, definitely hopefully, that kind of behavior will no longer be sustainable, no longer possible when Earth is completely, when global ascension. So after global ascension, if there are any mosquitoes, they will no longer be able to suck blood. They will have to do something else, figure something else out in order to um, continue being here. But most likely mosquito, the whole, the, the whole um, template for some to, to sustain mosquitoes and other similar um, kind of, of animals or insects 
will no longer be part of Earth's experience anymore. So there will be big cleanup. Um, as far as I know, any anything that is not natural, for example, plastics, all the plastics that's in the ocean. We are, I know a lot of human beings are trying to clean that up now, but whatever is clean up that we fail to do until then, those energies will completely be wiped. It will be completely um, shifted so that they're no longer in a reality, in reality of Earth after the global ascension. So that really is what global ascension is. Okay, so I just want to pause a little bit here. Uh, there's still more to come because I, I kind of talked um, what happens after the, the global ascension, but I still haven't talked about, you know, so what would we, what can we expect to experience as, as that process of global ascension is going to go forward. So I would do that. I would, I would talk about that afterwards. But so far, I just want to ask if anybody has any uh, questions or comments up until everything that I've talked about till now. I have a question. What about things like mushrooms or roaches, <laughs> would there still be around? Um, or fungus, fungus. You know, any, of, any of these things? I, I don't know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> okay. I hope I hope the roaches won't be here there anymore because you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but but that's just me, so. <laughs> You're not alone. Me. So as as far as the mushrooms are concerned, there are good mushrooms too. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say that mushrooms are all bad. So that's why I don't know. Maybe mm. maybe not. Nini, what should we do to to help that um essential like personal and global? Okay. Um well for personal ascension, if that's what you want, then I would suggest um is to really um be very mindful of your state your state of consciousness because sometimes we get into a state where we feel scared we feel fearful um for no no good reason uh, or we we have um we may feel anxious or we may feel you know so all all those the states that does not make you feel good is to be mindful and um, to understand Try to understand why you you're in that state, and also um, do something to take yourself out. For example, you know, I I used to feel really depressed. So what I did was I um, I've mentioned it many times, is I started listening to a meditation that um, that starts. And I listen to the meditation night, maybe not night and day, but at least during the evening, uh, during when I was going to sleep, I would loop that, that meditation over and over again. And when I am um, um, during the daytime, when I feel myself getting depressed, what I would do is actually just consciously um, say things to myself that will shift me out of it. So I consciously say, you know, I love, I appreciate, I'm thankful. So all of these, so I, I actually would go out for a walk and would say, I'm thankful for the pavement. I'm thankful for this, this grass. I'm thankful for this bird singing. So I would just keep doing this. 
and to shift myself out of that depressed state. So that's something that, um, that we can do because it is really, when you're in the mood, um, it's, it's like, this, this, this conversation in your head that's convincing you that, you know, things are not good. So then when you conscientiously do something else to um, counteract that and do the other work of just releasing emotions as well. So do all of those work to assist yourself to get to the state where you feel peaceful. And um, at some point, you will really find yourself there. Um, so that's a personal one. And in terms of the global ascension, well, I've been asked to anchor in um, cosmic love. So let's say that um, when you go about your day-to-day -day lives, just do your best to treat other people with love. So when you share the love that you can feel within with more people, then more people will start to um, resonate with that love. Maybe not at first, Maybe it's going to take a while. However, set that intention. Or it does not have to be that. Or maybe what you can do is um, volunteer to assist other people. Maybe um, help somebody to you know, do um, like meals on wheels. I, I know that in Toronto, they, they have something like that where they... They would go and deliver meals to um, people that couldn't do that for themselves, maybe for whether they are um, too old or that somehow they are um, disabled in other ways. So something that you can do that is going to help the, the, the people around you, help your environment, or if you can be like, somebody that you know actually go to a beach and start to pick up the, the the garbage from the beach that's really cleaning up cleaning up um mother earth so when a place is neat and tidy it actually the, the the frequency of that place is is just um is higher so those are things things that you can do some of the suggestions that you can do if you want to assist in global ascension because global ascension that's what um that that's what needed to be done as well is to clear any um dissonant frequency from earth any other questions Suggestions, comments? Okay, great. Let me continue that. So next I want to talk about is, so, okay. So there's personal ascension, there's global ascension. So how do we, so what does it feel like? What, when the, the, the whole earth is being cleared of energy. You know, what about us? You know, how how do we know what's going on and what does it feel like? So um first thing is I know everybody, or maybe not everybody, but most of you have heard that about the the, the grand solar flash. Hopefully you have, maybe, maybe not. Or uh, maybe you you heard about the other thing is three days of darkness. So they are actually um, part of the same process of global ascension. What global ascension is, um, is actually Earth itself. So uh, the planet itself um, 
decides when is it ready to do that because the birth factories have already made the choice that it is going to stop supporting anything below fifth dimension. However, it has not actually picked a, a specific date. There's no um, specific date yet. And it's something that we have no, no say in it because it's, it's really Earth's um, choice, Earth as an entity. And, and Earth, of course, loves us and want to give us the, um, as much time as we need to get ourselves um, prepared. So however, Earth is not going to wait until everybody is ready to ascend in order to do that. Because there are some souls that have already made the choice that they are not going to ascend for whatever reason. And then there are some people that, um, that has made the choice to ascend, but they are still just, you know, chucking along. They are not there, not quite there yet. And that's okay. However, at some point, Earth has to make that choice and it's going to make that choice together with source, with the creator source. And at some point, those two is going to um, get on the same page and say, okay, now is the time. When is that? Nobody knows. Only source and only Earth knows. And then, um, so at that point, then what happens is source energy would send up a pulse. And the pulse is going to go to the galactic central sun and the galactic central sun is going to filter that down to our, um, the sun of our solar system. And that's when, when the sun of our solar system got that, okay, they got the flash, all that energy from from the galactic uh, central sun, then it would have enough energy to do such a powerful solar flash that that I call it grand solar flash. Um, there's been other names for it. Um, I think the uh, another name is the event. Um, those things. So what it really is is a pulse of energy that is so potent that it's going to clean everything out. All the dissonant energies on Earth. And um, even though mostly it is doing that for Earth, however, it's going to have an impact on all planets as well. Because this is not just a uh, the this is not just for us, not just for Earth. It's actually for, it affects all the planets in the galaxy. So they would experience a, um, a transformation. However, may not be as um, potent as ours, that they would, they would have, they would know that this is happening because it, it, it happens to them as well. Only um, it would do something a little bit different for their planet. So I'm mostly talking about Earth because that's um, most important for us to, to find out. So what happens is before the solar flash actually happened, when the when the our sun, when our sun within the solar system got the flash from the galactic center of sun, what it does is it first draws energy into itself. That's why it's being experienced as three days of darkness. It's not that, you know, the sun is going to switch and, um, the off switch and go um, dark. It's just that the sun knows that it has to blast out a um, a pulse that is so potent that it's kind of when we know that we need to blow a balloon big, we need to actually um, breathe in deeply before we actually blow out. So that's what the sun is doing, is it 
draws the, the solar energy in first, and it would um, look like on for people on Earth, it would look like it's the sun come, all of a sudden gone down. It would be something like the um, and remember um, so August eighth we have we had a um, we had a solar eclipse so it would be something like that. It's not total darkness, but the sun would be dimmed. So that's what it is. It would be a um, and it it's it's that's three days of darkness, but it's. Not necessarily three days. It could be two and a half. It could be a bit more than three. It could be four days. But you know, roughly, it's a. It feels like around three days of darkness. Darkness does not mean it's pitch black. It just means it's darkened. So it's not like um during the daytime. It's just there is light. You can see that there is a sun, but the sun is somehow dimmed. So that's what. Um, it would be like, so when we feel that, when we actually see that the sun starts to look dim without um, having, you know, without being a, having an eclipse happening, then, you know, oh, oh, it's happening. So, but it's, so that's kind of your, you have a couple of days forewarning before the, the actual solar flash is going to happen. And also when the, the lights are dim, um, you can actually see energies coming in as well. Because um, when the light is, when the sun is, is bright, you don't see the um, new energy coming in as, as clearly. Whereas when the sun is dimmer, you may start to see things like um, different colors. So it would it looks a little bit like a pastel color. It may be um, it may be so yellow, pink, um, purple, green, all those. But it's a pastel yellow. It's a pastel green. It's not the bright green of leaves of tree leaves. It's a much more, um, I would say, like when you are looking at bubbles, like when you blow bubbles, you, when, this, when the sunlight hits it at a certain angle, you see that there are different colors swirling within on the surface of the, the bubble. So that's what it looks like, is you will see all these different colors, wavelengths of colors coming in because that's the new energy that is coming in. So when, uh, so after the, the two or three days of darkness of the sun, then what happens is all of a sudden there will be a flash, great solar flash, a grand solar flash. That's when all the energy is going to hit Earth and cleanse it in one fell swoop. So um, what does that mean? What would happen to us? You know, are we going to be able to survive it? Because you know, if the energy is so potent then it, that it's going to clear everything away. So what's, what's going to happen to us? The, so when that happens, um, or before that happens, we our body already knows, our body already knows. And um, our body actually has been shifting and changing. There are a lot of solar flashes um, or they called corona mass injection. So the CME, so those have been much, much milder compared to the, the grand solar flash. They are much milder. However, those pulses that are coming from from the sun is actually um, tuning our body to, to get our body ready. So when we get closer to the time and we see that you know, there are the, the three days of darkness, then our body actually knows that, okay, it is going to happen. So what happens is our energy field 
would start to pop out. So normally our aura is so is is um, much smaller. Um, well, depending on how um how much meditation you do or how how um you know how at peace you are, how um how much you resonate with you know joy like love, your aura may like meaning your your energy field around your body maybe a little bit more, but it's still not enough as we are still living in the, the in the remnants of the old matrix is still around. We, the earth is still hosting such um, disruptive energies. So our aura cannot really be ex extended enough to the full um, limits. However, when we get to the three days of darkness, the body knows it is time to pop out. It is time to pop out. So that's when our energy field is fully functional. So fully functional, I think it's about 55 feet in um, diameter. So 55 feet. So, you know, so from, from one side to the other side, is, it's about 55 feet fully. So pop out. That's what I mean. And there, there's been... Um, other names for it. It's called the Merkaba. So what a Merkaba is, is actually the Merkaba is our energy field fully functioning, popped out. And actually what it does is it starts to protect us from anything that may be able to harm our body. So before the, the, the grand solar flash actually happened, our Merkaba will become functional, or at least those of us that are ascending, our Merkaba would be functioning and it would start to pop out and it would start to protect us. It actually does a couple of things. It starts to um, clear ourselves, it starts to clean our own energy because when the body knows the body has been through similar things because this is not the first um, this is not the first ascension that we've been through so the body has already been through something similar maybe not at the to the extent that we are going to experience it this time however the the body knows what to do so um, it will start to heal the body as well. So whatever damage your your physical body right now may have, when it's being cocooned by this um, big Merkaba, fully functional Merkaba around you, it's like you're in your own healing chamber. Only it's not something artificial. It's not something that, you know, some human being or aliens has has created is your energy doing that for yourself. So you will be enveloped in this energy and that your own Merkaba is going to start to heal your, like all whatever it is that's going on that's not supporting you going forward, living in the fifth dimension. So all that is going on and then the grand solar flash would come on in to clear the planet as well. So how long is the planet going to take in order to be completely cleared? I don't know. I can't really tell you. So what, but what it does is, you know, all the, the um, whatever dissonant energy that's on, that's still on earth, it will all be cleared out. And also um, the animals or um, insects, birds, fish, or, you know, big other, so all the animals that are compatible with fifth dimension living, those would be cleared 
and restored to the optimum to be able to function and, and continue to play in the fifth dimension. And those that are not compatible, they will be cleared out in their template being, being cleared out. So, and the human beings as well, those that who is so does not want to, or is not ready to go into 5D, they would also be um, shifted into a planet that actually supports fourth dimension living. So they would be moved to a different planet because Earth, those that are, that wants to play um, 5D and beyond, that's where Earth can host them. Whereas anybody who does not, who's not ready for that, they have to be shifted to a different um, location. So that's what's going to happen. And what else? Have I missed anything? Yeah, I think I've covered pretty much everything. So, um, questions, comments? Um, my question is, would we still, if, if we stay here, would we still be eating food and would, would we still need like to support our life through um, earthly means like eating, drinking, sleeping, have a place to live, things like that? Um, it's a new game. It's like you know, when you go into a new game, everything is brand new. So do yeah. we want to? Do we still want to do that? Do we still want to have all those, um, but in a more high vibration way? I'm quite sure we can create co-create that. Right. So it's yeah. basically everything is being, um, I would say, reset. Not reset to original because we we haven't been playing in third dimension. We've been playing in lower dimension. So we're actually going into a completely new like think of it as you know this is a new game. So we don't. Know. Well, would the um, what we call matrix be uh, um, totally gone? So matrix actually just means um, a program. Mm. It's really, so force matrix, that's what needed, that's what um, will be completely dismantled. Okay. Mm. So don't expect the, the, the earth to look anything like what it is now. Mm. It will be totally different. Imagine anything that is not natural or will no longer be around. So it's um, so it's going to be very, very different. That's great that we're learning about it now. <laughs> So that's, um, yeah. Um, so yeah, just, just to let you all know what to expect. So when you see the, the sun dimming, then you know, maybe it's time to uh, go home. <laughs> so that's, that's the, uh, the global ascension. And personal ascension that you can, you can do anytime you want. Anytime you are ready to drop all the, the worrying. Would we, uh, what about like reincarnation, all the uh, other 
Uh, oh, there's also the uh, astral plane. Oh, what what happens to all those other planes? Um. Okay. All those planes. Um, it does not matter which plane it is. It's so. As far as I know, astral plane is not five D. Mm. And I don't think astral is five D. It's four D. So um, probably not. No astral. Mm. Does it mean that we don't have something that is kind of feels like that or, or acts like that? I don't know. Well, I've been I'm hearing sorry. from this other teacher that the astral plane has been being cleaned up. So, um, anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I let other people ask questions. Mm -hmm. And any other questions, comments? Okay. Wonderful. And um, in that case, 